Okay. Oh, so, um, <clears throat> well, in my presentation, I was going to talk about my budget and uh, fake blood stuff you buy in Tesco, but unfortunately, you have to make it, you know, professional. So it's not six year anymore. Uh, so uh, contents, I might talk about narrative, theme, genre, character, plot, location, budget, and distribution. Uh, first is my narrative, and uh, my movie is called The Nightingale, based on a uh, uh, Oscar Wilde short film, The Nightingale and the Rose. And my genre is uh, drama. So I have protagonist. He's uh, he's trying to um, fix something that's broken. He's trying to, and then it's psychological horror because it's going into his internal fears of um, um, seeing other people as uh, as as. Uh, Dangerous, like people that we don't know are dangerous. They're that we don't know them, so they subconsciously we might think they're dangerous. Or so my characters are uh, Frost. He's a uh, he's a uh, loving lovingly father, and you know, so he feels the world is dangerous subconsciously, uh, as I said before, and uh, this. Uh, as the movie goes on, this becomes a reality. Like, it becomes a reality in the movie. The whole forest that he's in becomes dangerous. Um, Alice is his daughter. She she's lost in the woods, and uh, her favorite story is the Nightingale and the Rose, where I got the name from. And uh, in the film, we see we don't see her. We see, but she's um, she's. Uh, She's true voiceover, and, and we see like memories and stuff. Um, then the, we have the gnomon, who uh, it's, it represents Frost's apprehension to the outside world. Like they, they don't have any, they don't have face, they don't have a face. Um, and this comes from the idea that when we see someone on the street, we don't uh, just for a split second we see them. We see like their uh, face, but then we we forget about their their looks and their and then we have the forest, which is a character on itself because um, creates a foreboding feeling in front, so unsymmetrical, feral. The wilderness is not particularly uh, particularly you know, welcoming, and then we have the road. Uh, a character from the road, Leo Mortensen, the Revenant, and the guy from Kane, and this is mostly what I made uh, based my main character on. These three characters, which are all in the wilderness, and then the plot. Uh, I talk a bit about uh, Nightingale and the Road, rather than, which is um, it's all about sacrifice the night, and the uh, sex student, and he wants to dance with another student. And if he brings her, if he brings her a red rose, she will dance with him. And then the a nightingale hears a student, and there are no red roses in the garden. So the nightingale goes in search of a red rose, and the white rose tree tells him to uh, uh, stick the uh, thorn against his heart, and he sacrifices himself. And yeah, in the end, the rose becomes tainted bl with blood. So it's all about sacrifice, and uh, in, in the main story is the same idea: the father uh, searching for his daughter, and uh, he's sacrificing his own insanity to look for um, the one thing he has to protect. And he begins to see all these faceless figures, as I said before, and he these faceless, and then near. Um, Near the end, to uh, bring himself back to reality because he's so uh, in, into his own psyche, internal thing, he has to like he cuts his own hand to bring himself back to reality. And then uh, my main theme, uh, what I really like is my main theme is um, self fatherhood. Um, I was always attracted by stories with fatherhood or motherhood because I think they're very powerful. And one of my favorite novels and movies is The Road, 
because it explores the whole theme of fatherhood. It's not really a story of folk apocalypse. And it's very warm. It's a very warm story, even though people think it's but well, my main story, my main theme is fatherhood. And then location. Uh, I'm planning to shoot in two places, uh, Cortown Forest, because it has a, there's a, beside the sea, and it kind of brings a bit of like, uh, kind of brings a bit of a magicalism to the story, because it's not really a lot of forest beside sea, and I think it's really special uh, in that way, the forest. And then uh, the Juice Mountains, which uh, there's a forest there, and it looks more like a child to get lost there. But um, yeah, it's more feral and crazy looking than Cortown. And then, so I'm planning to shoot uh, in both of those places. But then, uh, um, well, my target audience would be. Uh, between, uh, uh, so the budget, um, the writing pre-production, uh, the story writes, I found an article that says 2.5% uh, of the overall budget uh, should go to story rights, and it's 1,275. And then the writer should get 2.5 of the overall budget, so, Another 1,275. And then typing, uh, the typer generally gets 36.44 hourly rate. Which I think it's fine because it's a man page script, so an hour is fine. And then the art director, that's negotiable. Assistant art director is uh, 3,000 euros. Uh, wardrobe supervisor, 2,850. And uh, and then performers based on the focal website and Irish actors equity and performers generally get 550 to 7, 770 a day. So a protagonist who's working three days, you will get 1,650 quid uh, euros. And then uh, my other supporting cast will get uh, 550 because they're only in it for one uh, a little small scene. And then I have 10 extras. And then that's one day, so uh, that's like uh, extras get paid 50 for one day work. So it would be 500 we would spend. The overall performance pace would be 4,500. Oops. Photography crew is uh, 50, and POP is uh, negotiable. And then assistant director is. Uh, 4,200 uh, production secretary uh, would be uh, 1,950 based on uh, rate cards I found for three days. So uh, camera assistant 4,500, clapper loader 2,850, key grip 4,500, prop master and said before 360. Wardrobe, these people I think would work twice. So you're kind of double because they're supervisor of props and stuff. And then makeup artist is 3,600 and boom operator is the same price. And then the equipment, I try to uh, make it as cheap as possible. Uh, the Canon, Canon XF weekly 300. See on page for me. Big BC. 600, uh, shotgun mic, 75, you yeah, know, you see it there. Lighting equipment, um, 200 for the nighttime scene, 200 uh, weekly. A redhead, 30 quid, it. And a drone, 570, which would be pretty important for the aerial shots. A crane, 160, Teddy cam, 840, which is one of the best in the Film equipment higher, and then ground sheets uh, 15 quid, 15 euros weekly, mainly because uh, I think it's important because it's going to be mucky and stuff, and you don't want stuff getting dirty. And then uh, 
locations, uh, studio rental would be 1,119 uh, location and permit uh, fee. From the Irish Film Board is uh, 6,000, I found, and the uh, catering, uh, they're called uh, Pig's Pit or something. Uh, they're, they cater uh, up to 140 uh, guests, people, 750. Up to 140, and then set construction, and then, then uh, post-production uh, editor is negotiable. Assistant editor would be 4,200. Sound mixing 1,450. And then I couldn't find. Um, I found a production house here in Ireland called Raygon. They do CGI. Uh, everything from editing to CGI. And then the distribution, uh, and I'll talk later. And then music and composers, they're all negotiable. And then performance, performers who pay a uh, standard musician union rate, which I couldn't find, but I found their website. And so the total production cost would be 55,552 with 44 cents. <laughs> Sorry, that's the, that's the budget of Star Wars. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry, uh, so uh, distribution. Uh, so my main uh, funding place would be. Uh, uh, Crowdfunding, and uh, I found an example here. My favorite director, one of my favorite directors, Alejandro uh, Jodorowsky, in his latest movie, he got 103% funded. He's got a big following, so this is for, uh, yeah, he got, so art, art films do get funded. And so um, my main uh, place to, to go would be Kickstarter because. 60% uh, of shorts are cheap funding through Kickstarter. Most shorts that get uh, the UK have a 40.1% 40, 40 success of getting films funded, and creators are second in submission for funding from people. Uh, and March is the busiest project uh, launch month. So it's sort of competition for funding on Kickstarter because it's one of the Main and then um, uh, generally uh, I'm planning to um, well I would be planning to get into short films uh, festivals um, <clears throat> uh, there's some big leagues like the Burning International Film Fest here I thought uh, you can get paid for the Fastnet Film Festival here in Ireland uh, best of the festival would be five thousand and then. The Windrider International Film Fest, which is a student film festival, is ten ten thousand dollars, and uh, prize money. Um, and then the short film award in Seattle is two thousand five hundred. And then finally, I'll try and get some online distribution, which I found from uh, that website India was talking about as well, distributor. And short films, delivery charge, Netflix, you know, just, you just talk to me. Um, that is it. Thank you. Sorry, that was a lot of, sorry.